So if you have questions or comments or remarks, just raise your hand. There are two microphones, but I'm going to kick off. Since I um, moderated the press conference yesterday, and I should ask new questions, that was quite challenging. But I was wondering, um, because I think the relationship between, you know, a screenwriter and developing uh, figures is also maybe about love. When did you fall in love with the figures? And maybe you also, um, what were the aspects of your roles where you said, okay, they're so good, I, I, wanna, I wanna do this, you know? What was it? Ah, there you go, you got me. Yeah, okay. Um, yeah, I think cinema is about love in all ways. Um, and I, um, I, I can't make a movie really um, without people that I love. I might not always love them, by the way, but these two I, I do, I continue to love. And um, because there has to be some passion and fascination and curiosity and, and mystery um, in a relationship between a director and actors. Um, the actors, for me in this film, um, there are the characters that I wrote with Mauricio Zacharias, my longtime co-writer. Um, and they exist in the film, but the film is also about Ben Wishaw and Franz Rogowski and Adele Isarkopoulos. It's about those people as well. They show up as themselves. They are shaped and formed by the scenario as well as by the costumes and, and other things that give you um, figures different than them. But in the environment that we work, where there are no rehearsals before we start shooting, um, there is no preordained, there is a script, but there is no preordained um, emotional story that has already been told before we, the camera is, is started. So there's always a, an amount of improvisation, which is a form of intimacy, which is a form of love. That's what I'd say. I think there's so many things um, that I fell in love with about this script when I received it, but I remember, this is, you asked the wrong question, the thing that came into my mind was I remember Martin has this line uh, when he's breaking up with his new lover, and he, he just, and it seems so cold and so stark and startling on the page, he just says, I don't love you anymore. And I, was, I, I started to become interested about who this person was who could say that. There were, and there were a few lines like, um, like that that leapt out at me. And you become curious about what the person is who could utter that thing. Um, so yeah, that was that, that, that was that was something I experienced very early on, very sort of viscerally and immediately when I received the script. Um, I have been familiar to the body of work of Ira's uh, movies and have always loved uh, his capacity to create characters that are on the one hand actors saying lines, but also lines flying above a scene uh, or a space, and also um, this coexistence of an autobiographical body um, trying to be something fictional, and a fiction that becomes real upon a body that can't lie. And I think that, yeah, I, I I always wanted to work with him. The fact that he wrote a script for us is uh, just extraordinary. And when I knew that Ben would be a part of it too, it was very easy for me to fall in love with the script. Thank you. Are there any questions from yours? Okay, there's one. The microphone is coming. I mean, the person with the microphone, sorry. <laughs> Thank you, Michael, very first. Thank you for the picture, very beautiful picture. Uh, you brought up costume design, and the costume design in this movie honestly blew me away. It was uh, incredible how much it spoke uh, for, for the characters, for the film, for the storytelling. Uh, can you talk about like your active participation in that, uh, and maybe for the actors, what you get out of like a really rigorous costume design film? Uh, we just had lunch with the costume designer. I wish she was here, Hadija Zagai, uh, an amazing artist. Um, and, and an amazing collaboration, I would say, between she and I, and also between all the actors and myself. Um, you know, I, I work in a kind of realist form. Um, there is a naturalism to the film, but ultimately I'm very aware that I'm making a movie. And so I would say, to some extent, there were, there were like two racks of clothes we could have choose from. One would have been the kind of 
everyday version of these characters, and the other would be the characters which embrace the beauty of cinema. <laughs> and I would say we chose the cinema ones. And, and particularly, I would say, well, two things. One, um, the clothes um, are, are, are heightened. Um, to some extent, occasionally they are outlandish, but on these people, they seem extremely normal, which I think is because, um, uh, because uh, <laughs> yes, exactly. The actors are themselves outlandish and extraordinary. And, and so that became really great as, as a collaboration where these actors could pull this stuff off as if it was their everyday wear. I will say specifically with Adele, um, uh, with uh, her character, there was, she was um, from a different class and, and milieu than, than the two men in the film, and that difference is significant. Um, and yet, when we started to, to dress her, I also thought of her really in line with Jean Moreau and Brigitte Bardot and Sophia Loren, and, and there was a pleasure in sort of making her a cinematic object in the film, um, which then actually, to some extent, takes control of the film in ways that are unexpected through the story. So um, that was another kind of place in which um, the film is, is both life and cinema. You guys want to talk about anything about the costume? Well, the, the costume was uh, pretty extreme and very helpful. <laughs> A lot of the pieces are in my personal wardrobe now. <laughs> and yeah, it's, I think sometimes they even take over in terms of storytelling or the dramatic G. There are some edits in the movie, some scenes where costumes are combined or in the same space or one with the other through the editing that I find just hilarious. Uh, for example, um, Tomas in his snake leather jacket, he has just moved in uh, with Adele and then um, he calls this um, man and they are in bed, like he's with a new man with a red uh, coat and I hear classical music and for me the whole scene is about the costume actually. So I think it's very helpful for an actor to wear something nice. <laughs> a lot in terms of cinematography, the costumes, the acting. I found it very beautiful. But I also found bittersweet is um, that I come from a broken home, you know? <laughs> like, I found myself wanting that it would work out with the three of them having a baby and being a family and being super open-minded and woke and everything. <laughs> so I wanted to ask actually the three of you, and especially you, Mr. Sachs, if you believe in open relationships, do you also want that to work out? Do you believe in monogamy? Do you believe in new family concepts and all that? That's a big question. <laughs> um, uh, well, I will say this. I, I will answer by saying my kids, um, I, I have two 11-year-olds. Um, I raised them with their father, who's my husband, and a lesbian couple. We live next door to each other. My kids are right now at a Kiristami film, I think in this building over there. So, um, and it has worked out um, in, in, a, in, a, in a way that for me has been very beautiful um, and full of kindness and respect and um, love. So I guess in terms of family structure, uh, I believe that everything is possible and uh, so is pain. <laughs> so pain exists within relationships and pain is drama. And I think the difficulties, in a way, you hope that the difficulties that are projected on the screen somehow reflect in certain moments of, of decision that individuals have in the audience and that they struggle through and that they recognize. Um, so, uh, and I actually think um, I've been in monogamous relationships, I've been in non-monogamous relationships, and, and both have their challenges and both have the potential for, for power to be um, used in ways that uh, hurts other people. And I think that's what's interesting to me to some extent is, is what we do. Um, I'm not Tomas, but I identify with the position of a man who has some power and how I use that power and its consequence. So I see myself in the film. <coughs> We 
they can't see you guys. Hi, uh, uh, good afternoon. I really enjoyed the film, uh, in particular as a, a young filmmaker, seeing the cinematography and how it played out, the intensity of that. I was wondering if you could talk a little about your style and how that developed, because every single sequence felt fresh, felt new, and in particular the, the scene where uh, Thomas's head is blocking Martin's, and during that conversation it felt so intense even though you could only see literally the back of it um, and yeah i was wondering if you could just expand on it there's a there's a great um still from rosemary's baby the polanski film um, with i think it's castavetti's is on a bed and he's uh, there's a door frame and he's just off the bed and there's a picture or a description of the audience and the entire audience is going like this <laughs> trying to look around the door frame and see more and I think that maybe that's that's um, an inspiration to the extent that I that, that shot was not set up in order to create obstacles for the, the audience at all. But that shot was set up with an observance of, of the actors which allowed something intimate to be happening between the two of them in which maybe we didn't have exclusive privilege to be on the other side. So our exclusion in a, in a way creates the intimacy. <coughs> Um, the camera creates a, uh, is, is observational, but really, really close. Usually when you're observing things, you're not allowed to be that close to people. So I think that's part of the strategy. It's also, I'm not someone who um, is particularly comfortable or understand the nature of the cut that is unmotivated. Unmotiv so why did we cut? What is that doing to the audience? Why are we pulling out of this moment? Sometimes by staying in a shot, the sex scene between the two of them, for example, is a place in which the duration of the shot, um, the extension of the shot, is, is both uncomfortable and also makes you feel more in involved and somewhat more present. So these are some of the strategies. And I worked with an incredible, on this film, with an incredible cinematographer, Jose Dehai, um, who is uh, based in Paris and is French Canadian. And, and uh, is, it, she understood what I've been looking for um, my whole life in cinema in a way that was very new and, and allowed me to create images that I, I feel like I've been searching for for a long time. Maybe I could also um, ask you as uh, actors um, how it was to play so physical also like the intimacy scenes and um, also the preparation when it comes to like the communication with DOP and um, directors and so on how was it and also like in between you of course uh, yeah we've uh, been talking about intimacy coaches today i didn't even know that this exists um i've never met an intimacy coach um my theory is that i've always been looking for directors that are intimacy coaches themselves because intimacy is existentially important to acting and to life and to relationships um, not just in a sex scene so i guess i have um, subconsciously always been trying to find directors that are intimacy coaches uh, the way they portrait um, life and also the way they create spaces for their actors um, i have a, i had a partner a sex partner that is very very um, awake and very open and we just had a good time uh, so i think that helps a lot and yeah probably nowadays there are a lot of formats and productions that are produced in a way that even the directors themselves uh, turn into commodities and have to produce a lot of material for a producer and a production company and therefore um, the line of communication is different and um, maybe there are a lot of actors and actresses out there that don't feel very connected to their directors and directors being in positions where they need to be demanding and where they need to be efficient and um, I mean we needed to be efficient as well but we were partners in crime all the time especially when it comes to intimacy. I was just thinking, yeah, yeah, I completely agree with Franz, but I, I was 
yeah, I was just thinking that I don't remember, for me, it was not any so very different from any other singing. Like it was, and um, it was not particularly the, the hard thing. I don't know. It was like, it was, um, it was, I remember we just sat down and uh, I remember you saying, well, it probably needs to be quite a long scene because you've done the scene between Adele and Franz, which is pretty extensive, apparently. So it's, it's it had probably, because on the page, it was just like very made up. A few words, um, and um, and then we decided we would penetrate through, and then we kind of did it. I don't know. We just did it, and it was very trusting, and it was. I don't think we did. We just did it once, didn't we? Twice. Twice. <laughs> two times. Yeah. Or two different. Anyway, yeah. But it was. I feel like we had sex for a very long time, and then we did have sex. And I came. <laughs> and I came in because also he was a little bit nervous beforehand, and then. He came in super happy, and uh, it felt like we had sex the three of us that day. <laughs> um, I'll just add that I think that in a moment like that, really what the director writes is a makeup, something something bland and generic, and and in a way that's what the director does on set, which at least in this kind of scene, which is not full of cuts and not full of ways in which I'm constructing something um, through montage. So um, uh, basically, I create the structure, and, and we talked about the physical positions, but then there's an incredible narrative full, full of paragraphs and phrases and sentences and, and exclamation points and commas and pauses that these two are making, writing, um, through an improvisational performance, which is, tells you a story. Sex is usually quite boring on film because there's nothing that's happening, but somehow with these two in this scene, and I think with Adele also in other scenes, a story is told within the phrase and within the scene, and that's the that's what's kind of amazing about the performance, uh, is that it isn't real, it is physical, and they're telling you a story. Yeah, thank you very much, and I love that we started with love, ended with sex, and then again, you know, like it's a, it's a frame. And please don't forget to vote for this uh, movie since we're running out of time. A big applause. Again, for you. Thank you.